Okay, here we have problem six. And uh, on this problem, we need to find the angular momentum of these four particles that, have been, uh, that we have here in the diagram. Uh, we're just giving some masses, m1, m2, m3, and m4, m4 being the one in the lower right-hand corner. So for part A, we're going to look at the angular momentum of particle one, which has mass n1. And uh, just in general, uh, the angular momentum is r cross p, which is equal to r cross mb, mb being momentum p. Now, the mass is not changing, so we can simplify that to angular momentum being equal to m times r cross b. Um, uh, m here is just a constant, it's not a vector, that's why we could just bring it out um, into the left. Okay, so L1 is going to be m times r cross p, so it's going to be m, uh, m1, r1, b1, times sine theta1. Now that's because the cross product between r and b is going to be rv times sine of the angle between them. All right, so then we have to look at what's going on and understand what that sine theta is going to be. Now, when we look in the lower diagram, you see that I have put in light blue what theta 1 is equal to. Now, what is the sine of theta 1? Well, the sine of theta 1 is the opposite over the adjacent. And you see that the opposite side is the one that is r1 sine theta 1. And that's simply because sine is opposite of hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is r, and the opposite side then is the r1 theta 1. So then we can complete what we have there. And uh, you see that r1 sine theta 1 is equal simply to two units, just from looking at the graph. Okay. Let's look at the next problem, next part of the problem. Same thing, we take the m out of the r cross mb, and so our momentum for the mass number 2 is going to be m2b2r sine theta 2. Again, you just look at the triangle, remember the sine of theta is the side that is opposite to the angle, and the angle theta is the, sa is the angle that is made between the trajectory, v, uh, which I put in green, the green arrows, and r, which is the line from the origin to the particle. And they're looking at the graph, you see that uh, r1, I'm sorry, r2 sine theta 2 will be equal to 3 units. So r sine theta is equal to 3, and the result is 3 mb. We're going to apply the same logic to the third particle. Now, when you look at the third particle, you see that the angle between the green arrow and the line that would join the origin to the mass, well, they're parallel or anti-parallel. And so the sign of something that is parallel uh, say it's at 0 degrees, or anti-parallel, 180 degrees, is equal to 0. R sine theta there would be equal to 0. So the whole uh, angular momentum is equal to 0. Now, for part D, you will see that this gets a little complicated. One, we need to find that angle theta that is in light gray. Now, that is a complicated triangle because it's not a nice right triangle. So, uh, what do we know? Well, from looking at the uh, at the trajectory, we see that trajectory is at 45 degrees from the x-axis. Okay, so if that's the case, then the other angle there, which I put in in green, in darker green, that's going to be 180 minus 45, which is going to be uh, 135. Okay, now we know that all the interior angles in a triangle are equal to 180. So then we know what phi has to be equal to. And phi is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of 3 over 5. 3 being the y component uh, of the r vector. 
and 5 being the x component of the r vector. Okay, so, well, so now we have all of that, and now we can find theta. Because again, theta is going to be equal to 135 plus phi minus 180. Again, the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 135 minus phi is going to be equal to our theta. Uh, we can just put that in the calculator. We know that the angle phi is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 over 5. So, um, and we also know that r is going to have to be 3 squared plus 5 squared. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. Putting everything together, you see that r sine theta equals to square root of 2. And so then L4 is going to be equal to mb times square root of 2. Now, this is a good segue to show you something that I think makes this sort of problem easier to understand. Now that you get some practice in visualizing what r cross v really is, let's see uh, a different way of solving this. But now we're just going to use the conservation of angular momentum in our favor. Now when you look there at the particle number 4, the only one that doesn't have a number on it, if the angular momentum is conserved, that particle's momentum at the, at the time that it is pictured there, where it's located at the coordinates 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 3, or 5, comma, negative 3, the angular momentum at this moment has to be equal to the angular momentum at any other moment in its trajectory. So if I follow up its trajectory, I see that when it goes closest to the origin, that's when the angle between it and um, r, between its velocity and r, is equal to 90 degrees. So sine of 90 is equal to 1. So in that case, my momentum, my angular momentum, has to be equal to m r v sine theta, but I know that sine theta at that moment is equal to 1. So I can utilize that. r sine theta is going to be equal to r. And I see there from the picture that that is going to be when r is equal to uh, the distance 1 in the x, 1 in the y. So then r is going to be, by the Pythagorean theorem, equal to square root of 2, which is what we found uh, in a, I think, more complicated way uh, just a minute ago. So then your angular momentum is mb square root of 2. And when you look at the other particles, see if you can understand that same sort of logic. Say, for instance, if you look at m1, the moment that m1 is closest to the origin, that's when r sine theta is going to be equal to 1. And at that moment, r is going to be equal to 2. Or for m2, r will be perpendicular to the velocity v when r is equal to 3. Okay, I hope that helps you.